There's a certain calmness about Gregorian chant. It's, it has a joy, it has an intensity, but it is not um, worldly, it doesn't have a worldly beat. Gregorian chant is easier for children to learn than secular music. There, there is less uh, complication. It's simple melody. Uh, there's no beat patterns that they have to master. It's a very subtle thing, but it's something that, that people respond to uh, readily uh, because it is sacred music. They have sensed the, that this is something very special. It's not, not like any other kind of music. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. There are ruling principles of the universe. Why are there ruling principles to the universe? How did the principles or the laws which govern, say, gravity, for example, get established? If they randomly appeared, then why couldn't they just as randomly disappear and we begin to float around? It isn't gravity itself we're asking about, but the reality of the principles which produce the phenomenon of gravity. It's those principles we're asking about, not gravity. These are inquiries beyond the scope of the natural sciences. They can only be answered by the greater science, the meta-science of philosophy. But the philosophy must be rooted in truth and logic. The celebrated and nearly worshipped philosophers of the so-called Enlightenment spent their lives developing a system of insufficient thought. Talk about a waste of a life. The modern day heirs of their philosophical thoughts stumble around trying to provide an answer, uh, give answers to the question of life. Natural scientists spend their time explaining the mechanism of life, the how it comes into being, but that's a question more for the material world, things visible. But before the how question is the why question. Why would life begin in the first place? What would be the purpose? What forces would lay behind whatever purpose? In the end, Catholicism provides truth and reasonability compared to modern philosophy or even natural science. Catholicism isn't opposed to science, far from it, but the church is vehemently opposed to the misapplication of science. And for the record, when science is misapplied, it's not science anymore. It ceases to be science. Science means knowledge, and knowledge directly corresponds to truth. When scientists step outside of the arena of truth and begin using the tools of their trade to wage war on truth, they cease to be scientists. When they, for example, use faulty philosophy to advance an anti-truth, they turn dark. And when you step back and apply a modern philosophical principle to the greater whole, that principle collapses. As forces outside the church try to make sense of the universe and man and society and all of that apart from the truth, Catholic truth, they greatly limit their range of answers. For example, the moderns, for the moderns, the existence of man must be a random event. We just evolved or appeared or developed or whatever method they desire to propose which cancels out God, removes him from the calculus. If God is not responsible for man, then what is? Man operates according to certain rules and within certain boundaries. Well, where did those rules come from? What keeps them in place? How did the boundaries come about to begin with? What are the principles behind or undergirding the law that we cannot flap our arms and fly? Again, we're not asking about aerodynamics or gravity, but about the law which governs the law of gravity or the principles which govern the principles of aerodynamics. Consider, for example, the concept of time. Why does it move in just one direction? Why does it proceed at the same pace? Why do we see the same sky when we look up? Why is there not chaos as opposed to order? And on the even more invisible level, why is there love? Why do we cry? Why do we like music? In fact, why is there anything at all? There's no necessity for matter after all. None of the moderns have proposed at any rate. Matter must therefore be eternal for a modern because it could not be conditional. 
If it were conditional, it would have to have an origin. And if it had an origin, there would have to be a point at which it did not exist, a pre-existence of all matter, of all things visible. Since something cannot come from nothing, there would therefore have to be an immaterial set of forces to bring the material into existence. That is the only option for a modern free thinker, the only option other than matter is eternal. And allowing the very unscientific hypothesis that matter itself always existed, that does not automatically mean that life therefore always existed. Where did the sentient originate? Better, why would it have originated? It's not necessary to have life to have matter. A rock doesn't have life. It has nothing more than existence. Yet even there with a rock, there are immaterial forces at work on it. Why doesn't it float? Why doesn't it just crumble apart? Why doesn't it increase or decrease in mass? It has certain properties proper to it, but where did those properties come from and why can't they change? Something could not spring into existence from non-existence. What would prompt it? In the absence of existence, there would be, by definition, no governing principles because there would be no thing for the principles to act upon or to be drawn from. The immaterial rules the material, but moderns don't want to admit the immaterial. And that's what the point of all this is, to point out that there are moderns within the church, modernists. Emphasis is off God. They want a religion about man and the material order, about the visible world, because the invisible world, well, quite frankly, scares the hell out of them, which it should. All of this is the direct result of the Protestant heresy, the heresy of Protestantism. The philosophical end of Protestantism is the annihilation of the invisible world, a universe where total subjectivity rules. It is why this heresy must be fought against so violently in all of its forms in the church, including men in the Catholic Church who are Protestants under their robes. God love you. I'm Michael Voris.